subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to another Ninja Coaching Spotlight. I'm excited to have another coach and another wonderful ninja with us today. And we're gonna get jumping right on into this. The goal of these spotlights is really to showcase a coaching relationship, why they work the way that they do, what our coaching clients get out of these relationships. And every once in a while, a coach comes to me and says, oh my gosh, we need to spotlight this agent for what they've done, what they've accomplished. And every once in a while, they bring an owner of a company and they say, yo, we need to spotlight what they have done with their company and their people and how they've helped this rise to the top. And with that being said, I am so excited to have Patty Schmitz Thursman on today. And she is absolutely amazing. I've known Patty forever. She has been a ninja with us since 2012 that she has been introduced. I've known her in the ninja world. And then about 2020, she brought in Natalie Davis, who's also with us today, which a lot of you out there know. Natalie's been very involved with ninja for a very long time. And I'm excited to have both of you on. Patty, good morning. And also Natalie, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we're going to have some fun today. Well, Patty, real quick, let's introduce you and bring you into this interview here so that you can share a little bit about your background with Ninja. But first, let's start off with Portland. You're with John L. Scott in the Portland, Oregon market. And tell me a little bit about your marketplace, where you guys serve, what that looks like. Oh, wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. So we do serve the Portland metropolitan market, but our primary area of focus would be Western Washington County. So Intel, biggest employer in the state, uh, Nike headquarters there, a thousand wineries in the Willamette Valley. So you've got this really nice mix of tech and farming, and that's primarily our target area. That's primarily, would you say, is that the kind of like the south side of Portland, like going down a little bit towards the country or is that? Southwest. Southwest. Beautiful area, by the way. I've spent a lot of time. I know Portland is the place that I love it and all its surroundings. If you were to tell me, I'm like, this is my town. I have no idea where that is. It is so gorgeous up there. It is so wonderful. Like a beautiful place to live. Thank you. We love it. Now, Natalie brought you to my attention because obviously 2023 was not the ideal year for a lot of people out there. It it was not the easiest year. It it handed a lot of people their butts, as I've been saying, and really showcased who had a strong running business and a strong running team and a strong running organization. And you not only came out as the number one John L. Scott office in from, as you break this down, four states and 3,000 agents. Your office came out on top in there and you got dealt a hand of cards that nobody would ever ask for in 2023. And we're going to kind of unpack that today and talk about this journey and how you got there. And a lot of people come to me and they want to talk about their coach. And they'll say things like, I couldn't have done this without my coach. It was the most amazing stories of how the coach helped them. And there was a life that came to you when Natalie said, you got to talk to Patty. And I got on the phone with you and you you started to like go, okay, let me tell you about how like Natalie was able to do this with us. And I'm really excited to unpack that today because the energy that came out of you was incredible around this. Before we jump into all the logistics around that, Natalie, I want to bring you into this. Good morning, and thank you for spending time with us today to do this. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Can you tell me a little bit about your relationship that you have with Patty here starting off and your kind of like what you've been able to experience about her and her company and who she is? Yeah, absolutely. So I will go back to 2020, which is when Patty and I started coaching. And let me just tell you from the coaching standpoint, there's nothing that a coach wants to hear other than, hey, I'm going to introduce you to this ninja that has just as much ninja experience as you teach us ninja. And I've been friends with them forever. I didn't do that. And I was like, oh, that's splendid. Sure. (laughs) Let's get started. (laughs) 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 So in 2020, Patty and I were introduced and it has has been an amazing journey. First off, just outside of business and the coaching aspect, Patty is just a fabulous human. And so that is one thing that I truly enjoy in terms of our sessions together is just knowing that she's showing up not just for the people around her, but she also challenges me as a coach because she's such a bigger picture. And I'm a pretty visionary person. 
Patty's like a visionary person and she's like big picture. I'm seeing this little microcosm movement in the market. How's that going to impact my business? I'm like, that's that's interesting because I'm not seeing that across the country. And Patty's like, okay, well, we won't think about it then. We'll just keep moving on with our business and focusing on what we need to focus on. And so that part, when I have the opportunity to coach a ninja, that the learning is reciprocated, right? I am constantly learning and growing. And then I think I'm assuming, Patty, there are opportunities for you and your team to constantly grow as well. So it's just been a really beautiful dance, I think, in terms of our coaching relationship. I love it. Yeah. I, this, is, this is something that a lot of people don't, I think, understand as they get into coaching is they sometimes will hire a coach going, oh, this is my coach and my coach is going to tell me what to do and they're going to hold me accountable. And what what's fun and I hope really starts to come out of our time today is these crazy relationships and this respect that gets built out of these coaching relationships is what makes this so much fun. Like it's what makes this whole thing so wonderful. So I'm excited to go down that path. So Patty, let's go back to you. Let's go back to 2012. You get introduced to Ninja and tell me a little bit about that journey for you of like where your business was to like all of a sudden implementing Ninja to it because you haven't wavered from it. I haven't seen you go off and do other things. You've stuck pretty true to Ninja's kind of like my, my place. Yeah, totally. Let me go back though. At the very beginning, you, you described us as the number one office. I want to be clear here. We're in the top 1%. But we weren't the number one office. Yeah, just so Patty fact checking me, and I appreciate you fact checking me, so that we have the right information here. Yeah, top one percent. Top one percent. Funny. It's okay. Not number one. I have that written in my notes. Top one percent is what it says in my notes. So <laughs> anyway, I don't, you know, because there'd be somebody out there going, uh, uh, no, 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 you weren't. Oh, absolutely. We would break the internet. It's yeah. like, that's not it. <laughs> okay, let's go back to 2012. So I owned with my dad multiple John L. Scott franchises, and we were coming out of the horrific 8, 9, 10, 11, whatever, you know, the market that just kept being scary. And we were presented with an opportunity to bring our team to Ninja. And we said, well, if it would be good for our top producers, it would be good for people that were struggling to produce. It'd probably be good for everybody. So we picked everybody up and brought them to Bellevue, Washington and had our first ninja class. And our group came back. And at the time, my husband <laughs> was a detail guy. And so he created spreadsheets of all the Ninja 9 activities. And every week we had a class and every week we made everybody turn in their activities so we could document where they had been and where they were going. And every week we collected this data and it was palpable. I mean, the movement, the forward motion that was being made during this experiment with our, with our people was, well, it was mind blowing. And then we just went off, you know, we went off to the stratosphere. The following year after that, we took our group, which is, I think, where I met you, Garrett, to Fort Collins to do a retreat. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I mean, the sky was the limit, I, I guess I would say. Everybody was fully in. The numbers were astounding. We sold the company in 2014. And then at that point, I went back into everyday real estate sales. And, and here we are. It's funny when you first meet somebody, how you kind of ground their face to the environment that you saw them in. It's kind of like it's always there. I will always remember your your face and our conversation in the Harmony office downstairs at the installation there. It's just it's like ingrained in that that's that's where I met you for the first time. So funny. Patty, tell us a little bit about that transition, that 2014, you sell the company. So you go from ownership experience with Ninja, seeing this stuff work for the agents that work for you to now you're back to everyday real estate for yourself. What was that move like? And how did, how was it for you then? Like, Oh, now, now it's a different way of me, like looking at Ninja and applying it for myself. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was relieving not to own the company anymore. <laughs> right. And have that level of pressure and responsibility every day. I mean, I would start by saying, I had to sink back into myself and re-remind myself what I did and how I was going to do it and what it was going to look like and really integrate all the activities. 
But it was second nature because we had done it with our folks for so long. It was really second nature. And there's pieces of it, of course, that speak, you know, to people more than others. And I, I found myself falling back into the things that I love to do. Handwritten notes would be one example of something that I've always loved. I receive hundreds of them. I send hundreds of them. And so I could get back into the rhythm of, of those things. A lot of that time in 14, 15, 16 was spent on mindset. A lot of it was having to recreate my mindset, really get in the, I guess I would say the player mindset more than the victim mindset, which I had found myself, mm -hmm. you know, at times getting a little victim-y when I <laughs> own the company because you feel like things are happening to you and you're, you know, struggling to control the environment. I hope that answers your question. Sure, sure. I, I mean, part of it too, now you're getting into this showcasing everybody, here's how you do the ninja systems and you're doing it probably a little bit more now yourself, correct? Oh my gosh, for sure. And then once a week, I would still facilitate a class with our group. So, you know, I was still actively keeping people in the flow of the activities and, and then having to hold myself accountable to that as well. So now over the years and kind of going on through the teens and everything leading up to joining up with Natalie, you know, what did you experience? And then what was the catalyst for you to say, okay, it's time for me now after eight years of deploying Ninja, teaching Ninja, helping people thrive with Ninja. I now need a Ninja coach. What was the run up to that? Yeah. I do better when a professional is collaborating with me and when somebody from the outside that doesn't have any skin in the game, doesn't know me, isn't in my local market, doesn't have any any information about me personally, is bringing in information that opens my eyes. I just do better in that environment. And so I think at that, maybe Natalie remembers what the catalyst was, but I knew I needed somebody from the outside to provide me some direction. I And I can't put my fingers on exactly why, Natalie. Do you remember what my issue was at the time? <laughs> I, th I think that you recognize exactly that. Uh, the introduction was actually through Garrett and you had reached out to Garrett to say, hey, here's the thing. I'm ready for a coach. Yeah. And I know you, I don't know. I think originally it was, are you available, Garrett? And Garrett, I don't know if you were taking coaching clients at the time. And so Garrett said, you know what? You need to talk to Natalie. And then we connected and that was it. Yeah. You know, it's an interesting thing. And then you know, we have we have such a diverse group of coaches. And so usually when somebody comes to me and says, can you help me find the right coach? Yeah, I'm definitely in a position that I, I very rarely, you know, take on because really, because my number one goal is to make sure that that person is with the right coach. And I remember, Patty, when you came to me and explained the situation and what you're in, it was one of those like, as I got to listen to you in that moment, it was like, oh, I know exactly who your right coach is. And Natalie, you might be able to attest to this, that usually I'm pretty spot on. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you handcrafted her for me. I know, I know that because exactly. I did. Have you. you said this is the person that's going to understand what you're, you know, twirling about in your head or navigating. And just for everybody who's listening out there, I don't always get a chance to do that for everybody. No. But I am the type of person that if you come to me saying, can you help me? I will do that for you. And that's the, and I might be opening up a weird door there, but um, uh, Patty, yeah. I think Lisa, you got kind of <laughs> in a lucky Well, we're two for two now, Garrett, too, with the, the last session we had with John and the perfect match there. So yeah, you definitely opened up something there. I'm opening <laughs> up some weird doors here, but uh, I just want to be really clear that Patty, I appreciate that we had the relationship where you could call me and say, who's the right coach? And Natalie, thank you for being the right one to be there and step yeah. into this role. Yeah. So obviously you you bring Natalie in and I there's a part that you said, you said having somebody from the outside, because we have a lot of people that come in looking for coaching and different marketplaces, we will have somebody that will say, you don't understand, I need a coach that's in my backyard, that understands my market, that understands everything that we've got going on. And it's so darn important because if they don't have that, they won't be able to coach me. And you're coming at it from the way that I look at it is get somebody who's not stuck in all the muck and the stuff and the things that you think are important. And so can you just go a little bit deeper with that? Absolutely. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I need somebody way away. I know that. 
Because what happens in our market is we get together in the room with the handful of us, but my, my team of three, and we convince ourselves of something. And then we move it to the office environment. And then it's more convincing. Oh, now we're certain. And now I get to my network group, which is multiple companies. And oh, there it goes again. Yep, that's what's happening. And then maybe I read some local news or, you know, go to a, an association event. And yep, now, now it's on lockdown, right? Now I'm convinced. And then, right, I get with Natalie. And then, you know, the ribbons start coming off the package and the paper starts coming off. And then we open the box and we look in and sometimes she'll confirm it. And then I'll think, oh man, I'm the smartest person in the world. But most of the time she'll say, but what about, or have you thought of, or maybe you might consider, and then boom, we're off to the races. So, and for me too, the way real estate, it is so hyper-local. I get that in terms of what I need to do for my clients. But what's happening in the marketplace has such a profound impact on what we're doing here that if I don't have somebody from the outside guiding, I'm going to make a lot of errors. And we've made a lot of errors in the last three years. A lot of them. Well, I think a lot of people have. And it's amazing how you bring in collective consciousness of all the people around yes. you. I loved how you broke down the three of you to your office, to the association, to and constantly trying to go, are we crazy or are we, are we seeing this right? Are we crazy or are we seeing this right? And you just keep getting reinforced. Yeah. And it is fun to have somebody that's completely not in your world to be like, what are you, what are you looking at? Like, who are you talking to? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, and I think the other piece of it, just my natural coaching style is I'm that 30,000 foot view, right? So I'm looking bigger picture anyway. And Patty, it's funny that you talk about like peeling back the ribbon because one of the approaches that I usually take is like, okay, get tangled up in the ribbon and I'm going to wait until you calm down and then we'll come back and, and talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. totally. that's always a fun piece as well. Yeah. I love it. Because you have to go through that. Let's talk about the last, well, really, they say last 12 months, but really 2023. Because, Patty, you, you've been through, um, again, a pretty interesting transition in 2023. And um, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm gonna, I'd love to have you and Natalie talk about what this last year has been and kind of the mile markers around it, because there's a story that unfolds here that leads us to the, the final destination. And do you mind if I throw it to you in that way? No, that's great. Yeah. Because I think the two of you will be able to kind of describe this timeline of what happened, I think, fairly well. Because you started off with Cole joins the business. And I want you to explain a little bit about what this is, what this looks like, and kind of help this, how this helps explain the story. Yeah. So my background, I think it's, it's kind of an important part of the story. So I've been in the business for 27 years. At, when Cole was born, my husband left his career at Nike to be a stay-at-home dad with our two sons. He did a phenomenal job raising my kids, and I was out in the world selling real estate. Never in my wildest imaginings did I think my two sons would join me in the real estate business. It, we were never set up to do it. It wasn't in the plan. They both had their own lives. I never saw it coming. If they both would have become stay-at-home dads, that would have made more sense to me because they were raised by a stay-at-home dad. But that's not how it turns out. So Cole, at age 23, decides this last year that he's going to join us in the spring. My other son, Ethan, had already joined us. So at this point now, we've got both kids in the business and we are coming off a tumultuous 22. 22 was challenging for us. We, again, back to mistakes. We, we misread marketplaces. We made errors. We, we lost some clients. We, you know, we just, it wasn't, it wasn't fabulous. But we realized if Cole's going to join us, we're going to completely have to change the trajectory of what we're doing. So we set up a planning session at Natalie's direction. We set everything in motion. We start running. And then Ethan, my oldest, gets pregnant. So now we've got a baby on the way. He's going to be leaving for paternity leave in October. And so we're, we're scrambling to get Cole up to speed as we scramble to get Ethan comfortable to leave. And then horribly, about two weeks before Ethan left on his paternity leave, the gentleman that I sold our company to was killed in a motorcycle accident. And when, and when we say sold the company to, 
It was in process of being sold. It was not a finalized sale yet. It wasn't like, we're good, you're your way, we're our way. Like there was still a lot of tape kind of going on around this, correct? Yeah, there was, it was on a, it was on an extended note and I had, you know, stayed back to assist him lightly when he needed it. But yes, we were still, uh, he was at the end of it. We were close, we were almost done, but we weren't quite there. And um, he unfortunately did not have a will. So there was nobody to step in to run the company. And, you know, there was multiple offices and, uh, you know, 50 agents and six staff people. And so there needed to be some immediate direction given so the whole thing didn't collapse. So that's, that's kind of what happened in 23. Well, and Patty, I want to bring this to you because like in that moment that that happened, Natalie sent me an email or text immediately. It was a text and said, oh my gosh, this is what just happened. And almost as from a coach coming to me going, what do I do? Like, how, how can we help? How can we do like, what can we make happen here? And I remember that I got on the phone with you and your number one concern was the agents of this office. And the people that had put their energy and their world into, you know, this company. And it was one of the most amazing things because then it caused me to call Larry and be like, Larry, like, we got to figure this out or help or whatever we can do to make this, you know, give answers, suggestions, guidance. And um, I, one, I thought it was amazing that you reached out or we were having the ability, you reached out to Natalie, Natalie reached out to us. It was just this incredible thing that I was watching kind of unfold, but your caring concern for making sure the office was going to be okay. And you weren't wanting to step necessarily at that. I mean, that wasn't your goal, your big vision to step back into a leadership role at that point in time. That was that caught you off guard of like, this is what I see my future as in that moment in time, correct? That's correct. Yeah, no, that was... You were like getting ready to start another office going like, I can't wait to build... No, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. That, yeah, that, I, you know, I had done that for nine years. That was not my life's work. I got, I learned a lot. I grew a lot, but it was not, that was not my life's work for sure. So no, this was, this was really out of left field. But you stepped back in. Yeah, totally. And you took the reins. Yep. That's true. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is what happened. Yes. That's a real thing. And, you know, we're square in the middle of it right now. I will be in this role until October 8th of, of this year. And then at that point, we'll have wrapped everything up and, and we'll have hopefully put a bow on it. Well, let's go back to the number that I embellished earlier um, <laughs> that you are the, the, in the top 1% of John L. Scott offices in the four states there. And, and that's something that with what you all went through could have completely broken. Th I mean, we had people reaching out from all over. I had other coaches who knew agents in that office, in your office, that were reaching out going, oh my gosh, this is like the most tragic thing that could have happened. And very easily that that could have caused a entire you know scatter yeah and i feel like you stepping back in and the person that you are and the role that you serve to those people you brought them all back together and because there's no way you can end as a top one percent office having fragment and people running for the hills what did you do to to ground that office and to come back in and to be able to be the one that says guys it's going to be it's going to be okay we can yeah, wait this out. This was Patty. hard. I mean, yeah, it was hard. It, it was really hard. And I'm still very emotional about it. I mean, my initial reaction was, you know, I, I, I got you. Is just to look at everybody and say, you know what, I got, I've got you. We're we're gonna we're gonna do this. I don't know how or what or in what format or what's gonna all shake out but I've got you. And, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that during my ownership with my dad, you know, it's an emotional business, right? To own a real estate company. And then to watch Chris over the years of his ownership, to watch the emotions that he experienced. They're different, but they're the same. It's a big job to run a real estate company and, and to track on people and help them provide for their families. And, and there's a lot at stake for a lot of people. And I knew that. Um, I knew how hard Chris had worked. I knew how, how much 
effort he had put and energy he'd put into it. And I just didn't want to see the whole thing collapse because there was nobody there to open the doors on Monday and make sure the checks got cut. Well, and leadership is one of these things in in real estate that is so outrageously important and also forgotten a lot in brokerages, right? And so when when you're looking at the agents and the and the four offices in here, like what what did the agents need? What did they look to you for that you could say and, and brag on yourself a little bit here, Patty, because I think it'll help other leaders here too. Like what are the qualities that needed to be put in place so that agents could have that, what you were saying, so they yeah. can thrive, so they could support their families, right? Was it accountability? Was it just direction, motivation? <laughs> yeah. What is it? <laughs> all, of that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. all of those so, things. This is brutal. This is brutal. I'm going to, this, this was challenging. So I had myself convinced that I knew exactly what to do within a few days. Once the, you know, once my shock wore off, I thought I know exactly what to do. I ran a company before I'm going to do the same thing I did before. We'll be just fine. And in my mind, there was going to be kind of a two programs. You either do this or you do that. I'll put a little cherry on the top and everybody will be happy. We'll be just fine here. Over the course of my getting ready to announce what I was going to do, I sought out the advice of everybody that would talk to me. Anybody I could get my hands on out in the real world to meet with me, I have met with them. And the, one of the last meetings I took was with a former executive from Intel. And he said, Patty, stop. You've got to meet with every single person in the organization individually for 30 minutes. Let them tell you what's going on with their business and their life. Take all that information, then announce your plan. Now, in my mind, I did not have the time to do this, right? I'm thinking there's no way I have time to meet with everybody individually, but he's kept coaching me to do that. So I'm going to do that. How, how many agents, how many people is this we talking about across four offices? I had to meet with, so this would have been 46 agents plus six staff people. Okay. And I needed to do it fast, right? Because I need, I don't have a lot of time to think about this. I need to do it quickly. And let's, in that moment, let's also remember that the team is down one team member because he's on paternity leave. So you have Patty and new team member that's it running the business like the personal book of business yes that one percent thing we're talking about right this are yeah. the, the way we support our family right because this company this real estate company it's not going to pay me to step in and help it stay afloat there is that's not i'm just stepping in to help run it while they figure out what to do with it it's not it's not going to provide any income for us so yes we're down one member here we are it's time to meet and the first, the first big eye opener was every meeting for the last multiple years in any format pretty much had been on Zoom. So we were meeting Zoom, Zoom, everything was Zoom. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to give people the option to meet on Zoom, meet me in person or take a phone call. So my staff person gets all the meetings together and sends me the information. Not one human wanted to meet on Zoom. Nobody took a Zoom meeting. Every single person wanted to meet me in person and sit alone and have this discussion about their business. So that was the first shock, which was, oh my gosh, we've been relying on Zoom thinking it was working and people really want to be in person. The number two shock was every single agent had reworked their business over the COVID period to its own unique beast. There was no consistency to how anybody was doing it. They were implementing ninja systems. I don't mean it that way, but they had built a highly structured, fine-tuned business in their own format. So suddenly I was faced with, I can't do a one or two option for people. And now I've got to figure out what each person needs individually for their book of business to be successful and see if I can help deliver that. And that was Mind blowing to me. What an incredible discovery. It was, yeah. You could have pushed me off the cliff. It truly went from one session being, hey, I've got it. You're right. We get into that linear, this is what we need to do. Patty'd run a successful office before. It's like, hey, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Not a big deal. It won't impact our business. We're, things are, it's business as usual. We'll just keep moving forward, even though it was not really something that was on her radar. And then the next session of, 
I don't know how brokerages are operating in this market. What is happening? <laughs> what yeah. is going on? <laughs> yes. So one of the notes I wrote down here for a second ago was there's a difference between leadership and ownership. And Patty, yes. you 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 own the leadership role because the there's a lot of people that would have said, that's not my circus. And I'm sorry. But leaders without the sake of Am I being compensated? What does this look like? You know, how am I going to be paid for my time? Jump in and they and they take the reins and they figure it out and they they make something work. They be a leader. You just can't stop doing that. When I find real leaders, they just can't stop being leaders. What you learned about these people running their own individual kind of their own models, a really interesting thing that we probably need to unpack on a whole different level about the challenges that a lot of people are having in the industry right now coming out of COVID. And looking at this new marketplace is they have probably broken their own internal business model that it's not, uh, it doesn't work in this primary situation. So I, I, again, don't want to get stuck in the weeds on that, but I just want to say like, well done for taking the time and acknowledging, especially that these people all want to get together face to face and making it work. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was so interesting. So fascinating. The one other comment I have to make is there was a lot of misinformation out there that I felt had been driven by social media. So I had a lot of agents that met with me and said, I know my business would be perfect if I just could learn Canva. If I just knew Hmm. how to do Canva and could make the perfect fire book, then I would be a better producing agent. And there was multiple, you could go down different lanes. They all had different issues. But I I really attributed that to sitting on social media too much, watching people tell them who they needed to be rather than owning who they were and running their business based on their unique skill sets. So I had to do a lot of, you're okay. Don't You don't need to learn Canva. You don't need to do that. Just go out and do what you do amazingly well, which is... You know, and for most of them, I could identify it pretty quickly where their strong suits were. So that was the other thing, just the amount of misinformation. You were there, Natalie. You were taking the ribbons off and going, stop, stop worrying about that. Get out there and do this stuff. You're going to be okay. Yeah, totally. I love it. That's an incredible insight. And I hope everybody listening goes back and listens to that again, because you're so right, Patty, the, the, personality of the real estate agent that exists out there is always something that every actual real estate agent thinks is not them. Yeah. Right. And they're like, oh, I have to go change who I am. And it's really, no, you need to lean into who you are. And that's what Ninja is all about. So you have these discussions with these agents. I mean, obviously the results come out as the top 1%, not the top but top 1%. So what did you see from there? Like, how did the agents take this from these meetings that you had? And now you're, you're looking at this and saying, okay, I got to help all of these individuals operate in slightly different ways while also blanket implementing Ninja across this too. What was it like over the next year of that implementation? What was the feedback that you got from agents as they were out there now executing on these things so that they could perform and elevate themselves? Well, the, I'll, I'll say a couple more things. This happened in October, so we're in February. So we have not, you know, we're still just, we're getting ready for this. We're in it. So we're in it. We're getting ready for the yeah. second quarter meeting. Those will all happen starting the end of next week. What I would say is, you get in that initial rush of everybody's bonded, we're going, we're doing, we're, we're trying to provide some additional services and some clarity to people. Now we're in quarter two, analyzing after the triage, how is this going? I would say there's more synergy, there's more energy, there's more certainty, but now also people get into that winter slog and they start to look back and look forward and wonder is, you know, is it going to work? Are we there? How, how's this going to turn out? And you know, it it probably remains to be seen, right? We got to continue. I've got, I, I'd like to get, the, that's why I committed to a year because I think it's going to take that much time to get everybody headed in the right direction. One of the other things I didn't mention, but they were all begging to be in the room with other professional people that could, that they could bounce off of. And that, I mean, we facilitated quite a bit of that since since it all happened. And, and I think that's been very successful because they know 
you know, they've gotten in their isolated silos doing their business and that they know being together is going to make them make them better. Last but not least, I still want to clear this one percent thing. The office itself is not the top one percent. It's just the, my little team, just me and my two sons that hit this top one percent. Why thing. do I keep breaking that? Why am I it's like, okay. why, why do I keep just like embellishing upon this? Well, I, I, I facilitated one. that. No, but. it's OK. I just want to be. <laughs> You're the number <laughs> one realtor in the world, Patty. That's what we're trying to say. You are the number one in the world. There, that's I, what I meant. Number one realtor in the world. That's what I'm trying to say. And you won't let me get it out. Well, I will say being that high up and managing all of this at the same time exactly. is pretty incredible. And I'm sure the agents, and obviously we'll see the results as this year rolls on for the office and the agents there. Yeah. But you're, you know, I think about John Maxwell's Oh, his five levels of leadership, right? You know, and you have, you you can meet all of those levels, right? Yeah. The production, the helping others thrive, the putting everybody else ahead of yourself. And and you just have all of those elements in there, which I think is something that, no, here's my question to you on that too. And also Natalie, I want you to chime in on this is, these are the skills that you have in doing this, Right. What did you do to learn these things? Because I'm going to guess that these are developed skills. Like people can learn these. I mean, you have certainly a natural talent for leadership. I think that's clear. However, it's not just raw talent here, correct? I can speak to that, Patty. If you, I, Natalie, I will definitely yeah. speak to it. <laughs> Patty is very humble with this. <laughs> I know. I don't think Patty will to speak to that piece of it. I think there there is some that's natural in terms of having that entrepreneurial spirit and mind. And Patty's run successful businesses even outside of the real estate world, right? So outside of the brokerage piece. So I think having that business mindset, she has a fabulous partner that's a great support system as well. That's all, I think I haven't had the opportunity to meet him, but is constantly running in the background in terms of bigger picture, what the business looks like which makes Patty so unique. Being able to be that visionary, but then also at the end of the day saying, just from a business standpoint, this makes sense or it doesn't make sense. So yes, we're doing it or no, we're not doing it. And she also is a quick decision maker. She's not gonna hem and haw over, okay, I'm not sure if I wanna do this or not. It's a matter of processing and like she mentioned, connecting with as many advisors as she possibly can and then making a decision based off of that. I see it so often with agents as they're always getting ready to get ready. Patty's not. It's like, hey, this items one, two, three need to take place. And so I need a plan of action for one, two, and three. And then we're going to move forward with it. And then being able to adapt really quickly. Patty, if I can just speak to the piece in terms of the leadership capacity that you stepped back into a few months ago, I mentioned, you know, she went in, game plan. I can do this. I've done this before. Crank up the engines. Let's make it happen. And then having that humbling experience of, wait a minute, this is not the same game, right? This is not the game that I was in when I ran the business previously. Also, the needs of the agents are completely different now than they were when you were more actively involved. And also brokerage value proposition has changed drastically over the last couple of years. And so now what does that look like? And giving the office culture that it needs, right? So, I mean, being able to quickly identify that and then step into the role that's needed to execute all of those things. So I think a lot of it's natural, but then uh, the other pieces of it, it just comes from being able to adapt quickly and recognizing the environment that you're in. Well, then Natalie, to, to add on top of this, Patty, obviously with all these pieces that you've got going on and running this team and taking this team to the level that, it's, that you've been able to get it to and holding it together. The interesting thing is, is that I, I, you made the comment before we started recording that you don't want to make it seem like it's just all roses and it's just all, we, you know, we just have these successes. Like there's work that's done behind the scenes. And you made a comment of pulling the handbrake. And we talked about like every once in a while, we get overwhelmed. We get pulled to a place that we are in burnout mode. And Natalie brought this thing of pulling the handbrake. And I'd ask you about it. I want you guys to elaborate a little bit of that. Patty, I'm hoping you can start first of when you get to that moment, <laughs> working with a coach that can pull that handbrake and say, let's stop for a second and analyze this. Can you elaborate a little bit and explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, Natalie identified that concept in me early. And what, would, what she would notice is I would be rolling and then something would happen and I would start pulling the handbrake. And it could be for a variety of reasons. 
certainly the number one was whenever we got too busy, I would just start, I'm not doing it. We can't do it. And then uh, as I identified it over time and she helped me identify it, it would be when market conditions changed dramatically and we didn't seem to know what we were doing, when we made big errors, when we got burnt out, when we were tired, when we were, you know, intermingling and not really system oriented. And so we, yes, we pulled the handbrake <laughs> quite a bit, or at least I do. And I mean, my number one way to pull the handbrake was to stop marketing. Yes. We just would, we just stop. We're just, no, we're just, we're stop the marketing because I know the minute we do anything in marketing, it's going to make the phone ring. And, you know, if another phone call happens, I, I might get more crabby and my family doesn't like me when I'm crabby. So. <laughs> and not even marketing alone. I mean, I've seen when we talk about it, it's like truly the Ninja Nine. It's pulling the handbrake on the Ninja Nine. And I've we've seen it, Patty, with like handwritten notes. And she's like, if I send 10 notes out, the phone's going to ring and I can't do that right now. I'm like, OK, OK. <laughs> it's something that I've, I've spoken to a lot about what a lot of times when you get a, an established database and you know how the systems work and you get into a, a routine with those systems of, of making making sure they happen all the time. There's a certain point that it's not about doing the Ninja Nine, let's say 100%. It is about understanding how that Ninja Nine is a gas pedal for your business, where sometimes you yes. just want to feather the gas pedal. It's just like, I'm just going to give a little bit here. We don't need to give it all. Yes. I don't need all notes going out. Don't need all real estate reviews going out. Don't need to make all my phone calls this week. Like we are swamped. But the same point, understanding that all I have to do is give a little gas so we can turn the whole thing back on because of the relationships and where we're at. So very few people understand that it's either like an all on or all off. There's no you know middle ground there. And I love that you have figured out that place where you're like, we need to apply some break here for a little bit and hold on, but not come to a dead stop. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, well, we're continuing to learn that. I don't know if if we're ever going to, there's not an end destination on that one. We'll, we'll continue to work through <laughs> yeah. it because the team structure looks different yeah. now. Um, now they're a team of three. Previously, they were a team of two. And before that, it was Patty and an assistant, right? Like we've seen different variations of the team structure. So um, I think we're, I, I, Patty, I think we're still in that piece. I don't know. You may feel otherwise. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Yeah. I mean, basically, given the business model, when we met, the, in the spring and, and, and did the goal setting, we ended up doing, we changed our fiscal year to July 1 versus a Jan 1 start because of the way the team had come together late in the spring. I mean, we basically sat together for two and a half days and realized we were going to have to triple revenue in order to provide for three families instead of one or two. We doubled it when my first kid came on and then we realized we're going to have to triple it when number three joined. And I mean... That's a big, big move. It was a big jump. Yeah. After 2022, that was a big, yeah. that was a big, huge decision. So, okay. So I've got another question here then, which is as you have all these roles, you learn to pull the handbrake and to kind of, you're again, you're getting better at it. And again, I think it's one of those skills that a lot of us are always kind of perfecting of how do you manage that intake of new business and creation of new business. One of the things that also came up was the idea of staying in your lane and sticking to your role. And here you have yourself running this team, top 1% team in this office that needs your help, needs your role, needs your expertise, needs your leadership in there. How do you stay in your lane? Like, I, I, I mean, that's why I look at this and like you are like, you've got all these things pulling you in these different directions. Like in that, that mindset of staying in your lane and working with Natalie to stay in your lane, can please tell me more? Like... <laughs> Well, it was key priority number one that I gave the team. I was like, you guys need to figure out what you're going to do. Otherwise, you're going to step on each other's toes. And and here's where we walk that thin line in coaching. My number one priority, yes, is their business, but is above and beyond that is their relationship, right? It's still a familial team. And so if I see any stressors or strains that start to pop up, it's like relationship is priority. The, t the business itself will continue to grow. So I always keep that at top of mind. I wasn't given directive or charge to do that. That's just naturally where I stood and, and a position that I've taken. So as soon as Cole joined the team, I said, you guys need to set up a meeting and outline who's doing what when, because Patty had phenomenal systems that all lived in her head. And so the other two team members needed to understand what Patty was thinking 
And I think they're now getting to a point that they understand what Patty's thinking before Patty starts to think it. So it's kind of that predictive piece of what comes next. So Patty, that's that from the coaching standpoint, that's what I've seen. I'd love to hear just your experience and and the receiving side of that. I mean, you guys are getting to hear Natalie at her best right now. This is the voice. I mean, Natalie is so smart. Natalie, I cannot thank you enough for what you have done for our business. And the fact that you were able to integrate the, the maybe it's because you're a mom. I, I don't know. But you got, you knew what was coming for me working with my kids. And so I just so value you I, I, and, and how smart your brain is. So number one, everybody needs to hear that. Thank you. I'm going to go to the, the lane. Ethan taught me a thing that he learned maybe, maybe during college. I'm not sure, but heavy and light tasks. And that, that concept really speaks to me that certain tasks are very, very light for me and certain tasks are very, very heavy. And we tried and are trying in our team to figure out how to get all the light tasks to the people that perceive them to be light or that, that feel they're light and to get the heavy tasks off the plates of those that are burdened by them into another team member or to somebody we hire. That is the first thing I fall back on in my head is, am I asking the kids, my partners to do a light or a heavy task? And am I asking myself to do a light or a heavy task? Yeah. I like that concept. That's really good. I mean, it it, it helps you direct traffic there. I mean, we see so many teams, they just pull everybody together and like, oh, we'll just all do the things that we do. And like, everybody's doing everything and is outrageously inefficient. Whereas here you're, you're directing the traffic and understanding what loads people can carry. I have this vision of like logistics and trucks and stuff like that going through my head right now. But like, that's essentially what you're doing, right? That's exactly it. Which is incredible. And look at what the results that it's produced too, right? And now tell us a little bit about the lifestyle results because we talked a lot about the team, the business, the, the office, the financial results. What's been the lifestyle impact for you and your family with the growth that you've guys seen and growing into your sons coming into the business, you coming out of a leadership back into this leadership position that you're in now as well, taking care of a lot more people than just your team? So I think prior to the events of the last year, we had gotten the lifestyle thing really figured out. We really had. I mean, we we knew how to how to travel and take time and be certain and intentional. And I think we were we were excellent at it. This last little run has been a little challenging. I would be lying to you if I said we did sure. a great job with that. The last little run has has put some stressors there. But the thing I'm most proud of is we had a business that allowed one of my sons to leave for three months without any connection and to still receive an income and get to become a new father and and you know be a good partner through you know, the birth of his child. So I think we understand it. I think we make it a priority. I think we're going to get it figured out through this next little round because we all have things we love to do and we want to be sure that we get to continue to do them. So, and and I'm spending a lot of time with both of them identifying their dollar per hour so they can understand what, what can they hire done out there to save their sanity, their health, their relationships, whatever it is. So we spent a lot of do- time discussing dollar per hour as well. I think that's a huge piece, Patty. You are probably of all the ninjas that I've connected with the most dialed in as you talk about dollar per hour. Patty has narrowed in her dollar per hour per transaction. She was able to dial it into that degree. And so now being able to show her partners um, how to also do that, I think is is just going to continue to empower them. I mean, she knew exactly, let me say, pre-pandemic. Pandemic threw a little wrench in that. Pre-pandemic, pre-2020, she's really able to, or 2021, she's really able to dial that in per transaction. And so this market, you know, the last couple of years, I want to say two years ago, was a little bit of a curveball, but it's a beautiful piece to, to watch as well when you have that level of control over your business. Well, and what we're watching out here right now, and it's really fun to see, and Patty, you're getting a chance to fully take yeah. advantage of the kind of the situation is, I've said many times, I've never seen a better relationship built marketplace than what we're currently in right now. 
people are leaning into the people they trust. They're leaning into their friends or leaning into the, the ones that they know are going to give them the guidance and the support to cause as little confusion, as little turmoil as possible. So they know what to do. And if you've built those relationships and you've built them over a long of time, you and your team and your family have built incredible relationships in your area over a long period of time. And it does not surprise me that you're doing as well as you are and you're creating the business that you're creating. And it doesn't surprise me that you're the person that stepped back into this leadership role when it needed to be done. It says a lot about who you are. It says a lot about who your team is. And you know, for anybody who's listening to this and you know, wanting to grow and have a business that can thrive in all these times and going through all of this, it comes down to being, an, an, as we joke about, being a good person, leading with your heart, taking care of your people and showing up for them. And what you get is you get a lot of people that come your direction saying, hey, can I have your help? So Patty, I just want to again say congratulations to what you've built and who you are and your commitment to building a business around, you know, what we support. So grateful for you. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I love it. Yeah, and and thank- I was really with miss like. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is there any anything? <laughs> what else do we got for the people? Other than like giving her number one realtor of the world, I think that's yeah. what you were. Oh, yeah, you're right. going for. You can yeah. put that on your phone. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely figured this out. That you know, Patty is now the universe's best realtor ever, <laughs> and is commanding chief officer of the number one office team company. Put it on a card, Patty. (laughs) It's a badge. It's more of a badge you wear. It's not a card. You need people to know it when you meet them. It's got to be right up front. So yeah, Yeah. it's a badge. Yeah, yeah. It's a badge. (laughs) But Patty, is there anything that you feel that the audience might want to hear or you want to share with the audience that we haven't yet? Ninja taught me how to create an evergreen business. It did. I mean, it taught me how to build a business that will produce an income into the future and and give me certainty when I go to bed at night. It changed my life. My relationship with Natalie absolutely changed my life. I would not be here today. Absolutely, unequivocally, bar none, would not be here today with the level of success we've had without Ninja, period. Amazing. End of story. Yeah, it's it's been an amazing run. It's something I'm extremely grateful for. I find all of you incredibly compelling, very thoughtful. I'm super grateful. I That's where I would like, I mean, that's what I want people to know. It is a game changer. If you allow your heart to surrender to the work and do it, it's going to deliver a lot of beautiful results. Fantastic. Thank you, both of you, so much. Natalie, thank you for being who you are and being able to support as many people as you support in our industry. Patty, thank you for being who you are and embracing Ninja the way that you have and seeing the results and the successes for yourself and for all the people around you. Um, you If anybody is listening to this and they want to learn more about Natalie or a coach or they want to find that time to find a coach in their world, and I hopefully... Today, you really got a sense of what a coach can be because I find the word coaching is broken in our industry a little bit. I think a lot of people come looking for a coach because they want somebody that's got all the, they want to teach them new tools, new tricks, new stuff. And really, uh, this is like the epitome of a great coaching relationship that you got to hear today. And that's what we're here for. So you can go to ninjacoaching.com. You can go to Ninja Selling if you want to learn about that and find your right coach. And we're here to support you. And as we put on the table very early on, if for some reason you want a little bit of help with that and finding a coach, I I can probably help you with that. I know these guys really, really well. And uh, door is wide open now. That's great. (laughs) And I'll say this too. If you guys are want to, you know, experience this a little bit, join our Facebook group, head over to Facebook and search for the Ninja Selling Podcast. All of our coaches are in that group. And so you can post questions, you know, you can connect with people there. You can connect with other ninjas who are on the path, people who are just starting, people who are veterans and experienced like Patty. And so we have a place for you to come and experience each other so that you all can grow together. So definitely check that out. Otherwise, just call or text Garrett directly. And Yeah, uh, just, get, just put my number on the screen now. <laughs> sure, <he'll> take care of <laughs> you. It's flashing, right? It's just like, yes. call now. <laughs> <laughs> Lines are open. <laughs> Patty, thank you. Natalie, thank you. Matt, thank you as always. I appreciate you being on this with thank us. You. And uh, Patty, I know we'll, we'll we'll be talking in the future. You're going to continue to do uh, go on and do amazing things. So 
I look forward to future conversations. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.